I may be alone in this, but I view Batman the Animated Series and the later show, The New Batman Adventures, as being entirely separate things. Yes, they share the same continuity, but to me they are very different shows. Having said that, just because it's separate, that doesn't mean that it's worse. Even if I don't particularly like the change in art style. I'm looking at you, clown! Given that there were only 24 episodes made, doing a top 10 video would be kind of silly because that's almost half the show. So with that in mind, let's take a look at my picks for the five best episodes of the new Batman adventures. Number five, Legends of the Dark Knight. Taking its name from a comic book series that primarily focused on out of continuity stories from Batman's past by top creators, this episode is a neat portmanteau that tells three distinct stories from seminal eras of Batman's past. The premise is quite simple. A small group of children share stories about who or what they think Batman is. The first child recounts a tale told to him by his security guard uncle about a time the Joker robbed the Walker Musical Museum. And it's told in the style of an old school Bill Finger Dick Sprang story, complete with oversized props and cheesy one-liners. Truth be told, strings never were my section. I'm much better on the keys. <laughs> The second story is an adaptation from the opposite end of the Batman spectrum, Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. This tale involves Batman's fight with a fearsome mutant leader. I really enjoyed seeing a fusion of the art styles of Frank Miller and Bruce Timm in this section. And by the way, the casting of Michael Ironside as Batman is mwah, chef's kiss. You don't get it, son. This isn't a trash heap. It's an operating table. <laughs> The final story takes place in the present day, with the children stumbling across the pyromaniac Firefly, perpetrating an insurance scam. Along the way, they also manage to take a shot at Batman Forever and Batman and Robin director Joel Schumacher. Hey, who's talking about Batman? I love Batman. All those muscles, the tight rubber armor, and that flashy car. I heard it can drive up walls. Yeah, sure, Joel. Which, in hindsight, seems a bit mean-spirited. Number four, Over the Edge. This is perhaps a little controversial on my part because I'm aware that Over the Edge is a beloved episode that often sits atop other people's best episodes list. And I agree that it's a wonderful episode, but for me, it loses a little bit of its shine at the end of the episode when the twist is revealed. And I'm not gonna spoil the twist just in case you haven't seen it. Following the death of Batgirl at the hands of the Scarecrow, Commissioner Gordon learns Batman's true identity and seeks to bring him in. Like a fool, I allowed you to run wild on your private crusade. A psychotic misfit playing masked hero. Now I've paid for it with Barbara's life. Blaming Batman for her death, Gordon unleashes the full power of the GCPD on Batman and his allies, and even goes as far as to enlist some superpowered muscle to help bring him in. There are some really powerful moments in this episode, particularly Batgirl's death scene, where we see her body fall from a great height and land on top of Commissioner Gordon's squad car. Now the way this shot is framed with us almost in the back seat of the squad car with Gordon and hearing the impact of Batgirl on top of the vehicle, it's just so impactful, pardon the pun, making this one of the series' best episodes. Number three, Holiday Nights. Another portmanteau episode, this time adapting the legendary Batman Adventures Holiday Special comic book. This episode features three separate stories that take place over the Christmas period. Firstly, we see Harley and Ivy go on a Christmas shopping spree after they kidnap and enslave Bruce Wayne. I think the stuff is wearing off. Can't have that. Give him another shot. Right, rooney Give me some sugar, baby. No, not again. The second story involves Batgirl battling Clayface in a busy mall on Christmas Eve. Wait a minute. Hold it right there, young man. And the final story has Batman and Robin attempting to stop the Joker from murdering swathes of innocent people on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Poor bats. That champagne went right to your head. Now you'll miss the big countdown. I'm a big fan of episodes with multiple villains, and this one does not disappoint on that front. My only complaint about it is that this episode was the very first episode to air, 
which caused all sorts of problems for my nerdy, continuity-obsessed brain. This episode really should have aired later in the season, because we hadn't been introduced to Tim Drake, Robin, or told how Clayface had been revived yet. If this episode had aired as the final episode of the season, that little issue would have been resolved for me. So, in my personal headcanon, this is the last episode of the show. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! We... we killed him! Oh well. We were going to do it anyway. Number two. Mad Love. This is an adaptation of Paul Dini and Bruce Timm's multi-award winning comic book Mad Love, depicting the origin of Harley Quinn for the first time. As far as adaptations go, this is pretty faithful, with only small changes made. This episode is all about Harley Quinn's devotion to the Joker, and how her endless attempts to please him ultimately become her undoing. I'm a big fan of the original Harley Quinn, and Arlene Sorkin's performance in particular, and this episode really gives her a chance to flex her dramatic range. Because you stopped him from killing Gordon, he said he's going to take out the whole city. I've seen the plans, the gas bombs, everything. I finally realized this isn't funny anymore. I can help you get him if you promise me protection. As far as love stories go, this is pretty one-sided. Harley loves the Joker, but the Joker doesn't really care about her. All he cares about is defeating Batman. Along the way, we're told Harley's origin... She started out as the Joker's therapist in Arkham, who he manipulated into doing his bidding. In many ways, it's quite a sad story that ends on a depressing note. And it's one of the series' absolute best. I know how to make some smiles, Puddin'. <laughs> Number one, Growing Pains. This might be a controversial pick for the best episode, considering it's a Robin-centric episode, and not everyone likes Robin, me included. But this one really tugs on the heartstrings. I particularly enjoy media that makes me feel something, and I would argue that this episode is one of the most tragic in the entire DC animated universe. Robin rescues a young amnesiac girl from being assaulted by a gang of bikers, and he names her Annie. We learn that she is fleeing for her life from somebody that always seems to be lurking in the shadows. She has no idea why this hulking man is pursuing her. All she knows is that she has to escape from him. Now, it's impossible to talk any further about this episode without spoiling it. So if you haven't seen it yet and care about spoilers, now is the time to leave the video. Still here? Okay, let's go. After helping Annie retrace her steps, we learn that Annie is actually a sentient piece of Clayface that wandered off and lost its memory. The man pursuing her is the recently revived Clayface. You know now, you're part of me. Come home. Stay behind me. Don't let him touch you. If Annie were to rejoin him, then her identity would be erased, effectively killing her. While Robin is adamant that this shouldn't happen because Annie is a person in her own right, Clayface is equally adamant that she must return to him because he won't be whole again until she does. This episode raises some deep philosophical questions about the nature of life and identity. And like all Clayface episodes, is open to a queer reading. Watch my Clayface video for more info on that if that's your jam. The scene in which Annie sacrifices herself to save Robin is truly harrowing. And the end of the episode, where Batman attempts to console Robin, feels like a punch to the gut. Sometimes there are no happy endings. And that's my list. Do you agree with it? Have I left off your favourite episode? Go ahead and tell me how you think Critters is the best episode in the entire DCAU in the comments. You know how YouTube works. <laughs> <laughs>